we have already shown that microwave energy causes chemicals to spin. Chemical reactions are faster because of increased number of collisions. Do some molecules spin more than others? Can you customize molecules for speed and or lower temperature? What affects the efficiency of microwave heating of molecules? In fact, a predictive model has been experimentally generated and verified. There have also been reports of changes in chemical synthesis products with microwave heating. Let's take a little time to look at some of the unusual reaction kinetics of microwave heating. The chemical reaction rate, K, is generally measured as the initial slope or speed of the appearance of reaction products. In this case, the temperature slope or heating rate of the reaction is measured in degrees per second during the first linear period. Again, this data represents the example of simple polymerization of diamine and epoxide, a well-known SN2 reaction. For these reactions, the amounts of the diamine and epoxide are set at 1 to 2, respectively, to produce full functional polymerization. For the case of amines reacting with epoxides, the basicity of the amine should have a strong effect on the reaction rate. The aliphatic and alicyclic amines on the left are stronger bases than the aromatic amine on the right. This should be the same for regular heating or microwave heating. It's well known that microwaves enhance the permanent dipole strength of molecules. The aromatic and alicyclic amines on the left are more polarizable than the aliphatic amine on the right, so they should be a little more reactive in microwave fields. It's not really obvious from what we have here that these two rate factors tell us which structures will be faster in a microwave reaction. There's another possible factor, entropy. Let's look at that next. Recall that only microwave energy causes molecular bonds to rotate or spin. This is actually a source of entropic heat, which is dependent on the number of possible states the molecule can rotate through. Let's take a look at our three molecule examples. From the type of bond and the number of degrees of freedom the bond can rotate through, the total entropy can be calculated for each molecule. There are 10 degrees of rotational freedom for the aliphatic amine. There are only 8 degrees of freedom for the alicyclic amine. Finally, there are only 4 degrees of rotational freedom for the aromatic amine. The entropy for these three molecules is quite different. The more rigid the molecule, the fewer the degrees of freedom, and the lower the entropy. This might have an effect on the relative reaction rates. To get more data, more structures were chosen with variations in basicity, polarizability, and rotational entropy. There might be more variables to include, but we'll start with these three. Eight diamines and two epoxides were included as shown here. This allows a statistically designed experimental matrix, or DOE, to be used. By the way, DOE is a very powerful tool, so if it is not familiar, it would be worth looking into for any scientist or engineer. We will find out if any of these variables are significant, whether there might be more variables, and if there can be a predictive model. There were 13 reactions between those diamines and epoxides in a high-resolution designed experiment. Entropy and basicity turn out to be strongly significant and linear. Polarizability was not a significant variable by itself. There were no significant interactions between these variables, and there were no missing variables. The derived model shows an even stronger effect of entropy than basicity for these reactions, 
which is surprising. The model has an adjusted R-square of 0.9991, so it should be able to predict reactivities for similar reactants as well. Putting this in perspective, three to four times more reactive is impressive, but let's not forget that the change from oven to microwave is 10 to 50 times faster. Here's another curious result from the chemical literature. With standard heating, this reaction forms a half and half mixture of amid and ester. With microwaves, at a lower temperature, only the ester was formed. It's possible that any amid formed was immediately rearranged to the ester. Are there other examples of selective reaction products only formed with microwave heating? Let's finally move on to how we produce a large and uniform microwave field without arcing in part five.